we're going behind the scenes of an exciting production here in the beautiful city of Edmonton, Alberta. It's called A Pastor's Best Friend, and it promises to be an evening filled with inspiration, laughter, and reflection. Hello everyone, welcome to the show called One Step. Let's talk about the journey. I'm your host, Joel Bennett, and today we have something special to talk about. If you're in Edmonton area or anywhere nearby, you're not going to want to miss this. Have you ever wanted a night filled with inspiration, laughter, and heartfelt storytelling? Well, you're in for a treat because Inspiration Drama and More Inc. is presenting a brand new play titled A Pastor's Best Friend. This production promises to be more than just entertainment. It's a chance to be blessed, inspired, and yes, tickled also. I'm looking forward to that part. <laughs> with a belly full of laughter as we caribbean people normally say so let's dive into what makes this play so unique and why you should make it a priority to attend today we're lucky and blessed to have the director himself mr douglas prot and might i say this guy is a celebrity I literally found that out last night. <laughs> Mr. Prout has under his belt multiple international actor boy nominations in various categories. He is here to talk about the play itself, the creative process, and what we can expect. Mr. Prout, welcome to the show called One Step. It's an honor to have you, sir. It is my privilege and pleasure to be here with you, Gerald. Thank you for inviting me, and I am thrilled to be here. Absolutely. Before we get into it, Mr. Prout, I have, I didn't tell you about this one, but I have an icebreaker question for you. Okay. <laughs> nice. Now, what, what's the most surprising or funny moment during the rehearsals? Because I know that during that session, you know, lots of crazy stuff take place. So <laughs> <laughs> what can you share with us? Those that I can share. Yes, those that you can share, of course. <laughs> um, I think the surprise is, well, one of the surprises is realizing the level of um, unearthed talent that we have. Yes. Before I moved from Ontario to be here, I was warned that, hey, Doug, you're not going to get to do much of your passion here. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of um, theater and yeah. thespians and people interested. And I'm delighted to say that yeah. uh, um, they have all been proven wrong. Mm -hmm. I've found quite a bit of um, raw talent uh -huh. that um, I look forward to collaborating with and hopefully honing their their hidden talents and um, bringing them to shine and, and um, do well in the field. So um, that was exciting for me to be pleasantly surprised with the caliber and, and the type of um, personalities that I've met. Yes. Oh, sounds exciting. I can't wait. All right, um, let's get into it, Mr. Pro. So tell us a little bit, you know what? I don't, I don't, I'm gonna throw this in because it's something on my heart. Tell us a little bit about yourself, sir, because I see some history here that <laughs> I feel like I'm privileged to be Thank you. very in, kind, in, in your You're presence. Very kind. So can you share a little bit about yourself, Mr. Pro? Um, I am a lover of the arts. Yes. I am um, a full-time theater director. I've been involved in the creative industry for almost 50 years. Wow. So this is my passion. Even yeah. when I was working in corporate Jamaica yes. and managing an insurance company, uh, that paid the bills and sent my kids to school. Yeah. But I knew deep inside that this is not what I want to do. Yeah. And, um, but theater couldn't really look after some, some necessities yeah. of life. But um, I took early retirement back in 2010. Mm -hmm. And since then, I'm living my best life. This wow. is my dream existence in that I do 
just what I want to do. I work for and with whom yes. I'm comfortable and I want to. And I've seen my work travel to the UK quite yes. a bit. I've done some plays there all over the Caribbean and America here in Canada, mostly in Ontario though. So I'm delighted to be setting down roots here yes. in Edmonton. And um, so I, I go to Jamaica fairly often because there's always a job there in Kingston or Montego Bay. And I have, uh, um, fun fact, I have a yes. performing arts troupe that worked for me full time. Um, so that's around about when I took retirement in 2010. It's called Bay Vibes Company. Jump onto Facebook, you see Bay Vibes Company. Yeah, we up. provide the actors or the ghosts, I yes. must say, of a haunted house in Montego Bay, Jamaica. <laughs> so we delve fairly deeply into historical tourism yes. and I provide the actors for the haunted night tour. Yes. I designed that at the celebrated, the legendary Rose Hall Great House yes. in 2009. And since, two to since, since 2010, it's been there every night of the week, yes. right up until COVID. Then it had to take a you know hiatus. Everything took a break for those two years, and it's now back up. Not every day of the week like it used to be, but the numbers are still trending up. So we have four days a week there where we um. I jokingly tell people that I scare people for a living. <laughs> so we have the tour, which is an interactive one, yeah. and my challenge as a creative was to find the happy medium to entertain the tourists and yes. the locals who yeah. come to get the history of the Rose Hall Great House and they want to know about the fabled witch that occupied oh, yeah. Annie Palmer. Oh, yeah. But I, since it was not in a theatre setting where you have the stage there and the audience there, yeah. the guests move through every single room. Yeah. So what happens, uh, what I designed is that the actors dressed in period costumes, dressed up like zombies yeah, or living yeah. dead, yeah. and they move around and strange things happen oh, really? on the tour. So <laughs> you'll see a chair just slide across no unaided no or um, some a lot of strange things happen. I don't want to give away too yeah, much yeah, here, yeah. but you can take a look at some of the photographs and yeah. the TripAdvisor comments have been glowing and flattering. Mm -hmm. And um, it's very well appreciated and loved by both the Jamaicans yeah who are very superstitious people. Of course. And um, the local, the people from overseas, they come in droves up the hill. The tourists um, come up to experience what they call a haunted house. Um, but it's one of the last remaining great houses from the yeah. sugarcane from plantation uh -huh. era. And um, I'm very proud of that product. So that's that's been I, that's why one of the reasons why I visit Jamaica so often, just to yes. tweak and adjust and um, change things a bit, keep it uh -huh. fresh. And then I may direct a play there in Montego Bay, where I'm from originally, or in Kingston, because I've been directing for Basil Dawkins, a celebrated yes. playwright in Kingston, for maybe 11 years. I've worked with Oliver Samuels in Kingston for mm -hmm. five different plays in a row. And um, most of the top talents in Kingston or anywhere in the island, I've had the privilege of collaborating with them. But um, I'm just delighted and happy to be here now. And this is where I want to put down roots. Guys, it's an... This man, I grew up on some of the things this man have put his pen to paper in mm. relation to and on. Because Royal Palm Estate. Oh, yes, <laughs> man, yes. I, grew up, I forgot about I that. I grew yes. up watching that show. And I've read other things that you have yeah. taken part in. And I'm just saying... Yeah. I'm going to be having this individual on my show today. It's my pleasure, man. It's, I it's, did Royal Palm for about 15 years. Oh, so, my yeah, gosh. I played a lawyer called Maurice mm -hmm. Ray. Mm -hmm. He was the attorney for the lead character, Jennifer. Yeah. And um, we got up into a, a little bit of unprofessional yeah, um, yeah. behavior on, on occasion. <laughs> so, yeah. Man, it's an honor. I'm not going <laughs> to dedicate this show to the history of this individual, but I hope that I get the opportunity to, to speak with him again after today. But for now... Let's stay on point with what awesome, we're here awesome. for. Um, so, Mr. Douglas, tell us a bit about a pastor's best friend, the show that you are currently involved in. What's the, the story mm -hmm. and what drew you to direct this play? Well, uh, let me answer the second one first. What drew me to direct it is just good fortune, providence, God. Yes. Because I, when I came here, I thought there would be not a lot of opportunities to, to, to do my passion, to be immersed in, in what I love most, the theater. And I somehow 
Um, I was, I think on Facebook, there is Jam Jamaicans in Edmonton or something to that yes. effect. And There's I jumped on that and asked them if um, anybody's interested in theater and somebody mentioned the name yes. Pauline Henry Stevens. And I just in blind faith called her, hadn't even left um, Ontario's yet. So this is probably June or yeah, early June. And we struck up a conversation and she said she has a play that she's looking to direct, um, to produce. She's done about three successful plays in the past. And once I got here and we met, we just clicked. Yeah. We got along like a house on fire and um, we started working and it was a little difficult to find the cast because it's a big cast. And we, um, I think between the writer and myself, we skillfully whittled down the cast from I think 13 to eight. And um, the story is still as strong. Um, so what drew me here to do it was just providence. It's just the right timing. Just um, it just happened. So I am hoping that this is the beginning of a long-term relationship. Yes. That Pauline and I will collaborate and future works. And um, this is the start of more to come. I love the fact that we're getting some Jamaican flavor in the beautiful city Edmonton. And and I. Oh, Gosh, I'm just looking forward to Friday night, Saturday night. Yes, it's Saturday and Sunday. This Saturday and Sunday, yeah. and then the following week, Friday and Saturday. Yeah. yeah. Guys, I ask you, while you're watching this film, please remember to share it. We're looking for a huge turnout, um, and we want it to be as fun, entertaining, and as, I don't know, life-changing as possible. Awesome. So remember to share this content after you have watched the full show. Now, Mr. Proud, what were some of the unique challenges or opportunities in bringing this story to life on stage? Yeah, I like to consider the, the challenges as opportunities, as yes. you mentioned. So there were some difficulties. One was casting. We couldn't get the men somehow. We had sufficient females, but men seem to be becoming an endangered species because <laughs> we just can't get enough men that can commit that can find the time yeah. um you know to manage their busy schedules so that was a challenge because we went through both the two main roles we had like maybe five six could be ten different gentlemen that started yes. and then within a week they said you know i can't manage this schedule oh. it's too much and then we're right back at square one and that went yeah. on and on and on but as Providence would have it, we have ended with the two right men. Both Reeds, a Gregory Reed and a Dean Reed, who are unrelated, yes. but they're doing fantastically well and I'm satisfied. So the main challenge was casting and consistency to keep the cast together. Yes. Because unlike when I'm doing a play in Kingston and I'm working with any one of the main talents there, this mm -hmm. is what they do full time. Yeah. So they can come to a 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. rehearsal and could be an eight hour, 10 hour day. Yeah. I've directed a play with Oliver and, and um, Audrey Reed and Dennis Titus and we did it in 21 days, but we had 10 hour rehearsals. We came in the morning, re rehearsed for five hours, took an hour break for lunch and relax and back at another five hours. So in 20 days, we were ready here we don't have that type of freedom we don't yeah. have the um per, everybody has their nine to five yeah so it's it's challenging and um i've been told i'm a hard taskmaster i don't know how true that is but um i, I I'm a bit of a perfectionist yeah. i want what i want so um theatrically that is so when you have your nine to five and you leave at five and you come at six yes. and I'm there putting you under pressure yeah. now for another two, three hours, mm -hmm. sometimes it can be a bit much. And it, yeah. um, so maybe that could have been one of the reasons for the attrition, yes. for the men saying, you know what? Mm -hmm. I, 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 no, so I can't bother with this, you know? I don't know. That could be one of the reasons why. Yeah. Um, it, it's not as easy as some people think. You just turn up and no, it's a lot of work because yeah. everything is very specific and it's rehearsed over and over and over until you get it right. So a lot of hours and mm -hmm. focus and concentration and devotion and dedication yeah. are required for a successful presentation. And I'm hoping that as of this weekend, yeah. people will be saying positive things about this one. I have a good feeling about it myself. I do too. Thank you, you mentioned the cast. Mm -hmm. 
um, tell us a bit more about them. I hear they're quite a talent now that you have discovered all of that for yourself. Can you talk a little bit about the cast? Sure, sure. I am fortunate and blessed to have two sisters that are supremely gifted and talented in Noretta Lewis Prince and Yasmin Lewis Clark. Okay. They have done work before, and I know Noretta is formally trained. She went to the Jamaica School of Drama. Okay. So um, those two stood out in the initial readings. I could see the experience, I could see the talent, and I yeah. could see the professionalism professionalism in them both. Yeah. Um, the rest of the cast are relatively newer to, to the, to the um, art form. And so we had to do a lot of um, teaching and a lot of um, groundwork and bringing them up to speed. But to their eternal credit, yes. there was no dis dissent, there was no resentment, there was no um, negative vibes. They were yeah. just like a sponge willing to soak it all up. And they were, um, if we had more hours, mm -hmm. probably would have been ready before now, but nothing happens before the time. Mm -hmm. So we'll be ready for this weekend. The cast is, um, I think rightly cast they're there for a reason they are worthy they yeah. are prepared and i know that um i can expect great things from the rest of them from um Kiman wilson who yeah. i gather you know yes and there's julian moxham leah cookhorn mm -hmm. um casey there's tatlin um T tatiana lyons and um mm -hmm. i think that's around the I think I round about um, remembered them all there. It's a cast of eight yeah. and they are um, very distinct roles. Everybody has a well-drawn characterization, distinct yeah. personalities. And I think it's a, it's a very engaging, relatable storyline that um, a diverse audience can relate to, pretty sure. I think the end product um, for the, few, the nights coming might be somewhat of an inspiration to getting more men out the next time around. Because sometimes I think they, I've done a little bit of that myself. They don't mm -hmm. know how fun it can be, right? And there's a fear factor too as well. Right. So maybe, not not maybe the when this sh when this show comes out, mm -hmm. it's probably gonna change some lives and some out outlook on on taking part in in such an inspirational drama. So that let's, would be so welcome. Let's just put a, <laughs> yes. I'm gonna put my hope in that. Put it out there. Mm -hmm. um, as a director. Mm -hmm. How do you approach working with your cast to bring out those strong performances? Um, do you have any unique techniques or philosophies that you follow or use? I think one of the basic tenets of every director worth their salt yeah. is to respect individuality. There is no one size fit all. Okay. I can't take a particular method or concept and just say, everybody, this is it. I segment my cast, I assess them individually, and I try to meet them yeah. on a ground level. So okay. I will tailor fit my rehearsals for your specific needs. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll discuss the character. I give them back our homework to go and dig deep. But I meet them on a personal level. Yeah. It can't be just, um, okay, everybody do this. I try to see if I can draw things from them that will seamlessly merge yeah. with my own vision. Because, okay, I had the script before them all, so I perhaps understand it ahead of their own. So yeah. I give my interpretation, but it's not that whatever I say goes. I want to see what you bring to the table. Yeah. As you grow in character, the person you're playing becomes you and you start to make some artistic decisions yeah. based on that person being immersed and you understanding who that yeah. person is. So I have to leave room and latitude for the person to creatively express themselves. Yeah. I can't just shackle them and handcuff them and say, this is it. No, I'm not one of those type of directors. Mm -hmm. I love and I enjoy and I relish in the growth and development of my actors. So my method is a bit of tough love. I can be harsh, I gather. Um, I don't really believe it. Yeah. But um, I try to give them space to create within the context yeah. of, of um, what we're trying to achieve. So they buy into the dream and it becomes theirs and not just me inflicting myself upon them. So um, I think it's um, a matter of respecting the talent guiding and leading and hopefully motivating yeah. so that I can extract from them what is within them because no one is coming to see me. Yeah. They'll, they'll, they, they come to see fleshed out 
deep um, acting, credible acting, um, a believable storyline. So it is a matter of uh, creative collaboration. Yeah, yeah. And my directing artistic traffic. Yeah, because obviously you have all that experience under your belt too as well. I wanted mm -hmm. to throw this one in. This one is not on script, but how do you, I, I bet during rehearsal you identify certain characteristics or certain traits in individuals that they might fit a, another role instead of the one that they're playing. Have you ever had that experience, had that experience where you had to switch individual roles because you realize that one individual may be stronger to play one role in compared to the other? What was, what was, Absolutely. I don't know if you've been a fly on the wall, but that happened in this very oh, one really? where <laughs> where I came in, there was a, a one character was playing yeah. um, a particular character and I quickly sensed that she probably would be best suited elsewhere and yeah. I swapped them around and, yeah. um, you know, outed fires. You don't pour gasoline on, on, a, yeah. on yeah. a smoldering um, flame. So we, we, we um, discussed the switch and... Um, just continue to encourage them both and um it worked i think to our advantage so um that that happens all the time where um yeah. you you can make a creative or executive decision after the process has started because it's dynamic and yeah. fluid yeah. it isn't something that is you know set in stone and it has to be this yeah. and no you have to leave wiggle room mm -hmm. for the creative process to to yeah. to, to, to you know flow it's clear you're very passionate about this, Absolutely. this craft. Um, let's talk a bit more about the theme itself of mm -hmm. the play, A Pastor's Best Friend. Um, it seems to focus on relationships that support leaders in, in the faith um, community. Why do you think this theme is important for audiences today? No man is an island mm -hmm. and we do need friends, irrespective of how introverted or, or, or strong and individualistic yeah. human beings need people we're designed to, to cohabit and to coexist mm -hmm. and um, this show um, in with using the vehicle of comedy yeah. and light moments there's lots of hilarity here because if we have a rather dark serious message mm -hmm. the, on, as the undertone as like um, um, subplots yeah you have to give a spoonful of sugar oh, yeah. or honey to make yeah. the medicine go down. Mm -hmm. So if we were to give you a dark, strong story yeah. about um, people losing their faith or not finding their way, but if we can find a humorous Caribbean way yeah. of enjoying it, the message is more palatable. Yes. And we enjoy it and embrace it and, and it's more memorable. Mm -hmm. So we use quite a bit of comedy. I yeah. guarantee you, and I hate offering guarantees, but yeah. you, you have to laugh at mm -hmm. certain things. Mm -hmm. And But the message is serious because it's, um, it's about perhaps a pastor being too focused and having too much tunnel vision and yeah. blinkers on with his ministry, his church, that he doesn't see some other things in his very home going on you know yeah. the needs of his wife the needs of his daughter and he misses some things and he himself is is a flawed human being who isn't yes. and the story in a nutshell it's about an error he made yeah. just like one night of poor judgment and indiscretion sets in motion a series of events like a domino effect yeah. and how does he recover how does he repair and navigate this mess that he has unwittingly created for himself and his family yeah. so he immediately um, utilizes his underling the bishop to become his best friend to help bail him out of this problem yes. i won't articulate the problem here you'll see it on the weekend <laughs> you better come and but see he it. has a unique problem yeah. that we all understand yeah. and um how what happens now how does a man of faith um yeah. recover and um what about his daughter that he wasn't paying enough attention to that had her own issues that was he was oblivious to them with his drive and passion yeah. so life is about balance yeah. you know we can't be too blinkered uh -huh. and, and, and focused and linear that we forget that hey there are other things in life that you know the balance the yeah. way we lose the balance man thank you for that detailed 
Uh, <laughs> that's a teaser right there. You know what I mean? Yep. That's a detailed teaser right there. So you better mm-hmm. you better get your tickets and um and show up for for the upcoming nights. Man, mm-hmm. it sounds like there is something for everyone to relate to in this story. That is true. Let's dive into the production details a little bit. Can you tell sure. us what audience um, audiences can expect in terms of the atmosphere and the set design? Because I know you guys have worked hard on that part. Yes, yes. And I, I am big on sets, but we took an approach for a number of reasons. The time we had and the budget we had yeah. that we went minimalist. So you won't see a lavish Tyler Perry kind of set with upstairs, downstairs, and lights that work on a shower and a kitchen. Yeah. No, we're minimalist. We're, we use the black box theater concept yeah. where mostly um, everything is in black. It's more stylized. It's more representational than literal. Yeah. Um, because this play, to its credit, has like, 10 different locations oh, really? so it's not just a living room like yeah. if you go to most plays you go and see especially the yeah. jamaican plays you'll see a living room sofa and a kitchen and um you know bedroom door perhaps this is much more fluid much more dynamic in that you're one minute you're at the church office then you're in his bedroom at night then you're at a hospital you're at an airport you're at the front garden you're so it, it's almost cinematic yeah. in the number of locations that is used to enhance the the narrative being unfolded before yeah. your very eyes so um the set design had to be fluid to facilitate quick scene changes yeah. what audience member wants to sit down in darkness and listen to music you can do that at home you yeah, don't need to pay your 40 dollars to come and do that so we try our best to have a very efficient and seamless transition from one location to the other because the locations are important to the unraveling of this particular story yeah. so we were minimalist but we think you'll enjoy the various um locations as shown in the set design yeah. okay it sounds like you guys um, really put effort into bringing the story to life. Absolutely. So for yes. anyone listening who might be on the fence, mm-hmm. um, what would you say to encourage them to come out and see a pastor's best friend? Great question. Thank you for asking. So, um, I think a standout pointer would be the universality of the appeal. This is not just a Jamaican play. This yes. is not just for Caribbean people. This is for anybody because... The real problems and challenges and conflicts of the human experience yeah. are dramatized here. And we all have issues, we all have conflict, we all have problems that we have to navigate and, and, and hurdle. And so here we see a man who means well, well-intentioned, a leader among men, um, making a misstep. Yeah. Um, and regretting it yeah. and tries his best to seek redemption yeah. and um so we see him becoming you know owning up to it and admitting he was wrong and seeking um being contrite and um accepts the 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 rule of law the way the universe unfolds yes. um so i would recommend it to a diverse audience base because the story um, transcends the a, a regional um, location and just um, a Caribbean mentality. While it is Caribbean people, yeah. but it's based in an imaginary place yeah. with um, featuring Caribbean um, actors. But um, the themes and the storylines and the problems and the issues and the inspiration that is here. One of the things that I praise my writer, Pauline Henry Stevens, is that while it is a faith-based product that's a bit of a misnomer because sometimes when we hear faith based oh they're gonna preach at me it's gonna be boring <laughs> it's gonna be all biblical no yeah. um it isn't preachy it is real life but with persons who are grounded with a spiritual foundation yeah. and that um people of faith have challenges too uh-huh. life isn't perfect and hunky-dory for them because they are uh, you know are for a particular belief and faith yeah. system a belief system so um uh i think without being preachy and and full of dogma and being pedantic and and quoting scriptures nothing is wrong with that but we avoid that and it's more open and more all-embracing and all-encompassing so um i think it can be um readily absorbed 
and um, appreciated by a wide cross-section of viewership. Thank you for sharing that, sir. I think sometimes the, the rest of the world tend to think that Christians don't have the same challenges right. and downfalls yes. as the, re the, the unbeliever um, have also. So this play mm -hmm. is definitely mm -hmm. um, pointing the information out that you know we all go through various phases of life so thank you for sharing that and mm -hmm. that makes the play sounds even more interesting so let's go over the logistics when and where can people see the show and mm -hmm. how can they get tickets okay great yeah. we open this weekend which is saturday november 16th and we yes. have the final show for the weekend on the 17th then we're back on the Friday of the next week, which is November 22. Okay. So it's November 22nd and 23rd. So okay. it's the s Friday and Saturday. Okay. So it's this week and, and next and week. Next week. Yeah. Okay. But next week, it's Friday, Saturday. This okay. week, it is Saturday, Sunday. And we start on time. We don't okay. do the Jamaica time. <laughs> 7 o'clock is 7 o'clock is 7 o'clock. Yes, okay. we start on time. And location is, is at the Glensgary Community Hall? Correct. Located yes. at 133 Street, Edmonton. Okay. Great. I'll put that in the comment section Please, so you guys you. can have that for reference. Thank you. Um, thanks for the info, uh, Mr. Douglas. Now, before we wrap up, do you have any final thoughts um, or message for our listeners? Um, gratitude. I begin from a place of gratitude. Thank you for having me. That's first. Well, and um, I also have gratitude for being here and having this process unfold. I was yes. delighted by the prospect of um, finding, unearthing these eight talents to work with, to collaborate with. It's been a pleasure. I've learned a lot from the experience and yes. I look forward to doing more. So I just want to appeal to my Caribbean folk and to anyone interested in a good night of wholesome yes. entertainment and quality theatrical fare to come out and support. Um, your own location, actors from this region yeah. um, doing their thing. And I'm trusting it will be a very memorable and instructive night of theatre. A I'm pastor's best friend. I'm sure it will be. And I'm looking forward. Thank you, Mr. Proud, for sharing your insights Thank you. and passion with us today. I'm sure our listeners are excited as I am to see a pastor's best friend. To everyone tuning in, don't forget the date. Don't forget the time. Be on time. Share this content so we can have a good turnout. We appreciate you. You all take care. Have an amazing evening, sir. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank Guys, you so much for having me. Take care and bye. Bye-bye.